What is going on, guys? My name is Hussein, and uh, this is a very interesting article that one of you guys uh, sent to me, and uh, I'd like to make a video to discuss it. Okay, obviously, it has a little bit of a clickbaity uh, title, but the content is good. The problem that uh, Lucid Chart, in this case, the company that ran into this problem, is valid. And uh, I think anyone can run into it. But the, the article doesn't discuss this in details. They used to have HTTP 1 and they switched to HTTP 2. And now everything is slower all of a sudden. Obviously, there's a lot of things that the article doesn't discuss and the comment section of the article actually clarifies it more, but I'm gonna explain what happened. I'm gonna summarize the article for you guys and what is the problem and, and uh, what was the solution and, and how do you avoid these kind of problems? I'll have a link to the article below guys, but uh, so you can read it for yourself. I'm not gonna read it, but here's what happened. Lucid charts have a bunch of HTTP one services, CDNs, content delivery network mainly, right? And those CDNs, they have like a bunch of CDNs, right? A bunch of services, and they are running on HTTP one one. And they used to have a load balancer, obviously an HTTP one one, and the clients all of, all the way here are consuming the content through the load balancer, which then uh, statelessly uh, funnel the request onto the backend HTTP one services. Okay, so that was running perfect and they wanted to switch to HTTP two. So what the article doesn't clearly mention is they only switched that part. They enabled the HTTP two at the load balancer, which is I think I, I believe they were using Amazon. Okay, however, the back end services were still using HTTP one. Okay. So what happens guys when you're HTTP one all over, right? All the way from, from the client to the load balancer to the server. With HTTP one, we know that there is a TCP connection that you open. And when you open that TCP connection, each request that you send can only be sent for, for a given uh, TCP connection, right? So you cannot parallel request on a same TCP connection. And we talked about that. Check out the videos all over here to learn more about that topic. But so the way the browsers do all over here, the browser open, I think six to 10 TCP connections really depends on the browser if it's HTTP one, and that starts in parallel sending those requests. So you open six connection to the load balancer, and for each client, for each origin, right? And then you start sending those to the load balancer. And the load balancer will basically take these requests and each request will go to one of the backend services. And doesn't matter w which one, right? If you're using load uh, round robin or whatever. So these will be load balanced correctly, right? So at a given point, there is a limit to how many requests a client can send because you only have six or 10 connections to begin with. So if you have like 100 requests, those 100 requests get, have to be queued at the client side before they can even get sent to the load balancer so they can be consumed the service side. So that's HTTP one, right? So what Lucidchart did here, they took the load balancer and they enabled HTTP two. That's it. They didn't touch the backend services, and that is a big mistake. And we're gonna explain why exactly, right? So they enable that, they turn on everything, and all of a sudden, there is an extreme load capacity on the server side. So what happened here? Okay, so let's explain what happened, right? And we know how HTTP two work. We know how HTTP one work. So now my same client, which is the browser, right? now has an HTTP two connection to my load balancer, correct? So now one TCP connection 
is enough because with this HTTP2, I can actually multiplex request into the same TCP connection. There are limits to the streams, and I believe that it depends on the load balancer, uh, depends on the proxy, but usually this limit is around 100 streams, right? That means 100 requests in parallel, concurrently, can be sent from the client to the load balancer. And it's one TCP connection. So all of a sudden, the load balancer now have more requests to work on, right? It has like, instead of six, that's the limit, right? At a given uh, concurrent request, right? Six concurrent requests, now it's 100. Because HTTP2 is like, whoa, it's just like, it's really fast, right? You can multiplex all that stuff. And now all of a sudden you have this flood of requests. So what does the load balancer need to do now? Well, the load balancer need to do its job, which is I need to funnel this to the upstream backend servers. So what did it do? Oh, 100 requests. I am going to establish TCP connection. Well, what, what is the backend? The backend is HTTP1. Well, I'm sorry, but I need to open more TCP connections to funnel this question. And this is, the, this is, is not explained by the article. The load balancer know that the backend is HTTP1 and HTTP1, I can only send one request on a TCP connection. So I have 100 requests sitting here, right, at a time uh, with, with, a with a streams with HTTP2. Now I need to establish a backend HTTP1 connections. And how do I know that? I need to just I keep opening TCP connection with every backend. So all of a sudden, the number of TCP connections are, are almost tripled or even more than that, right? Because I, I have more bandwidth now. I need to ins I start sending all these requests. So all of a sudden, these servers cannot handle the load. The experience for the client is now better because we're sending way more requests. So the servers now, if you think about it, all they need to do is they need to increase the load. What the article discusses here is like, no, they want to throttle, which I something I completely disagree with. I mean, you uh, well, let's discuss this a little bit. So the article here says, we want to, how to fix it? They want to throttle things. They want to throttle things at the load balancer. Okay. This is something I completely disagree with, right? I think, first of all, before we throttle thing, we need to understand why do you have so much request, right? It's like saying I've, I've, you've been driving Volvo for the longest time and all of a sudden you started driving Ferrari and now he says, no, it's too fast. Uh, I need to slow it down. So what do you say? It's like you start driving Ferrari as a, as a 40 miles per hour or 60 miles per hour. That is not a solution. You just got a wrong car, right? You are not ready to enable HTTP2, right? Either increase the capacity of the backend or even better, enable HTTP2 at the backend, right? And obviously that's not an easy task because most of the web servers at the back end, if you're running an application, might not support HTTP2 all the way, especially this article is a little bit old, 2019, April, so more than a year now, so maybe now they have these HTTP2 at the back end, but the moment you have this HTTP2 at the back end, your problem will be solved now. So if you're gonna use HTTP2 at the back end, the less TCP connections you're gonna establish, because now we don't need, the load balancer doesn't have to open a TCP connection for every single request, or I, I mean, yeah, load balancer does pooling and preheating those connections, but it does not need to open a TCP connection. It can start multiplexing on the backend if the HTTP, if the backend actually supports HTTP2, right? So now that's one solution. You can turn your backend into HTTP2, and yeah, you're gonna start sending, receiving the same TCP uh, request, but those actually better because now you have less TCP connections compared to the HTTP1 model, right? The other solution is re-architect the whole thing, and and they do say that. And I was like, oh, re-architect the application, but and I said, oh, that's a good idea. But then I read this. I was like, to had better handle a spike request, which is completely not what I had in mind, right? 
you have to re-architect the application, especially the client side, to see why are we sending this much requests, really, right? Do we really need to send out this much request? Can we lazy load this thing? Can we wait to group these requests? So when you need to discuss, like, why is the client sending so many requests, right? And is that necessary? Maybe it is. I don't know the application, right? But I think the application need to be architected so that it sends less and less requests if it's possible, right? That's the best way. I mean, sometimes it, you don't have to, but if, are there any caching in the client side that needs to happen? But yeah, that's actually a very interesting read, guys. I I, 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 I implore you to read this article and just read the comment section. It's very, very interesting. People from Nginx and HAProxy are responding to that. Obviously, the solution that they propose also will work. I think it's it's not the right solution to be honest. It's like it's like you're slowing slowing down your Ferrari, right? You buy a Ferrari and then you're slowing it down just just because uh, you cannot handle the load, right? What they're proposing here is to minimize at the load balancer level HTTP to minimize the number of streams, right? From hundred to I don't know twenty or six. So you go back to the same speed essentially, which is kind of pointless if you think about it <laughs> i don't know i might be wrong guys but this article is just very interesting to me right and uh i don't know what the lucid chart are in right now and uh what they are in uh, what they are building and what what is the state of the architecture but i'll be uh, i am very interested to know where uh, they took this architecture again guys i might be missing something here but definitely we uh but definitely let me know in the comment section below what do you think right do you think uh http2 general is a mistake <laughs> which is i don't i don't think it is but uh yeah because uh yeah it's just it's just very interesting thing to think about i would i would credit this article to say um for what for one exact thing i agree that Logically speaking, HTTP2 will consume more CPU resources. Not necessarily RAM, but definitely more CPU. And you know why, right, guys? Because if you're using HTTP2, then you're playing at the application level and the HTTP protocol is doing more work. It's not just reading requests. It's reading packets. It's assembling streams, right? And it's waiting for for packets to be assembled in groups of streams and and that's could be expensive if you have a lot of requests just the assemblage of these streams as requests and then so the load balancer will suffer right that will observer if they are http2 they will http1 they will not suffer but if they are http2 that then yeah that extra cpu usage uh will will eat up some of, of your cpus that that logic to actually um uh sort and and work with the streams will will eat up your cpu a little bit but i know that node.js have been working and ha proxy and other nginx have been working on solving these bugs and and memory allocation and, and cpu uses with http2 if you google the http2 cpu you'll see some problems there but i believe those were addressed right but this problem is very interesting because i think the architecture need to be revised here right the back end is http1 and the front end which is the load balancer side of the front end is http2 right and that could be a problem right so consider that and i talked about that in, in many of my videos like if you're front end is http2 and then you're back in http1 you didn't you actually increase the load at, the, at your application which is not wrong right that the, the premise of the of the article is, is not wrong at all it's it's what the happened to them right so even even the title is correct, right? Say, hey, well, turning HTTP2 was a mistake, but they forgot to add the rest of the stuff because we forgot to do the whole thing, right? All right, guys, that was uh, that, that's, that's for me today. Very quick video to discuss this article. Uh, I'll have a link below to check it out, and I'm going to see you on the next one.
let's have a discussion in the below uh, comment section below. What do you guys think on this topic? Okay, see you on the next one. Goodbye.